With compositing workflows, you may want to have all of your composite layers linked to external files, so that if they are updated externally, they will update seamlessly within Affinity Photo as well. I'll show you two ways of initially setting up your document to achieve this. First, let's cover using File New to start with a blank document. This approach requires me to input the pixel resolution and the bit depth manually to match my render pass images. If I go out to my file browser and I examine one of the images here, we'll see that the pixel resolution is 5400 by 3780. The limited file information here does not inform me of bit depth, but I have saved these images at 16 bit precision. So on the new document dialog, we'll start with a 1920 by 1080 preset, and I'll modify the width and height so they match the image resolution. Then I'll change the image placement option to prefer linked. This is crucial to ensure that when we start placing render passes, they will maintain their external link. Across on the color options, I'll change the color format to RGB 16 to match the 16-bit precision the images were saved at. If your images use a color space wider than sRGB, such as ACES or Prophoto, you can also change that here. For my images though, I'll leave it set to sRGB and click Create. Now we have a blank document with the correct resolution and bit depth, but I'll show you an alternative workflow that can be quicker. I'll close this document down using Command W on Mac, Control W on Windows. Then I'll go to my residential folder where I have my render passes, and I'll click drag in the denoised image file, then release the mouse button. This will create a new document with the correct pixel resolution and bit depth. The only issue here is that the denoised render pass, which has become a background pixel layer, is not externally linked. I want this to be updatable, so I'm going to delete it for now and re-import it as a placed image layer. Before I bring all the images in, I'll want to go to File, Placement Policy, and choose Linked. This will ensure that all placed images are linked externally, rather than embedded into the saved document file. Regardless of how we set the document up, it's now time to start placing the render passes. I can use File Place and browse to the images, but it's also possible to drag drop multiple images in, which is my preferred approach. I'll go out to the File Browser, shift click and select all the images, then click drag them in and release the mouse button over the document to place the images. Now the images are placed centrally to the cursor so they may not be aligned with the document bounds. To solve this, I can select the Move tool using V, enable snapping up here, then just drag them into place. At this point, I'll save the document by going to File, Save As. I'll rename this to ArcVis Render and click Save. This saves to the native Affinity Photo document format but all placed images will remain externally linked. Now I need to sort through the render passes and composite them. First, I want to select the denoised pass and bring it to the top of the layer stack. Although I can click drag to do this, a faster and more precise approach is to use keyboard shortcuts. I can use Shift Command right square bracket on Mac, Shift Control right square bracket on Windows to move the selected layer to the top. Now I need to select the ENV, or Environment layer, which contains the background sky detail, and move it underneath the denoised layer. After selecting it, I can use Command and right square bracket on Mac, Control and right square bracket on Windows, repeatedly, to gradually move it up in the layer stack, until it reaches the correct place. Now I'm going to select the Indirect Volume layer, then Shift Click, to select the other layers directly underneath it. These layers all want to go above the main denoised render pass, so I'll use that shortcut again to move the layers to the top. That's Shift Command right square bracket on Mac, Shift Control right square bracket on Windows. Then with all four layers selected, I'll set the blend mode to screen. The mist layer is very overpowering, so I'll select it and bring the opacity right down. I can use keyboard shortcuts to quickly set opacity. For example, 
0.15 in quick succession will set the layer opacity to 15%. The direct volume layer is making the clouds too strong as well, so I'll reduce its opacity to 50%. Now I might do some further typical non-destructive edits to this composition. For example, I'll bring the mist layer opacity up to 50%, then I'll add a recolor adjustment, and click drag to clip it inside the mist layer. I'll experiment with the controls on this adjustment until I've created a blue tinted atmospheric haze effect. Then I might add a live Gaussian blur to the emit layer. The emit layer is providing the illumination for the car headlights. If I zoom all the way in and start increasing the radius here, this allows me to create a subtle diffusion effect. Finally, I'll select the environment layer and I might add an HSL adjustment using Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. Then I'll reduce the saturation to give the sky detail muted tones. I don't really need to clip the HSL shift adjustment into the ENV layer because it's at the bottom of the layer stack, and so the adjustment will not be affecting any other layers beneath it. Finally, at the top of the layer stack, I'll add a brightness contrast adjustment, which will give me some final control over the level of contrast in the composition. Now that I've set up all my layers, and they are linked externally to the original image files, I am in a good position if those files need to be changed. For example, the 3D scene might be re-rendered, and the output files may be overwritten. Moving out to my file browser, I will simulate this by copying a set of images from the Residential New folder, and pasting them into the Residential folder, choosing to overwrite all existing images. Moving back to Affinity Photo, we will see multiple notifications informing us that the original files have been modified. If you don't manage to click the Resource Manager button on one of the notifications, you can access the Resource Manager from the Window menu. This lists all resources within the document, embedded or external, and here we can see all of our render passes, which are showing as modified. I can select one, then shift click and select them all, then click update. This will update all placed images in the document to reflect the overwritten versions. And we will see our composition change. Crucially, however, all of our non destructive adjustments and filters stay in place and continue to render on the new versions of the placed images. Now the external link update process is manual by default, but you can change this behavior to automatic if you wish. I'll go to Preferences, which on Mac is found under the App Title menu, but on Windows you can find it under the Edit menu. On the General Category, I can enable this option, Automatically Update Linked Resources when modified externally. Then close the Preferences dialog. Now let's say I wanted to revert those new render pass images. I'll copy the versions from my residential backup folder and paste them in here over the updated copies. Back in Affinity Photo, those placed images now update automatically and we can see the original versions have been restored. I'll just show you a feature on the Resource Manager that you can take advantage of. At the moment, the placement for all of these placed images is set to linked. However, I can select them all and choose Embed down here. This will embed them into the Affinity Photo document file. So if I need the document file to be self-contained, for example, if I'm sending it to an external client, I can easily embed all of the image files into that one document. I can also toggle these images back to linked placement. This is quite useful if you have forgotten to set the initial placement policy. So if all your placed images were embedded when they were supposed to be linked, you can just go into the resource manager here, select them all, and click Make Linked. So there we go. 
a look at setting up an external linked image document for compositing workflows. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.